Good day, nerds, and welcome to episode 74 of the Nerd Cantina Show. I'm your host, Ken, joined by my co-host, Steve, and we're going to cover this week's nerd news. We've got some some billionaires doing good things in the world up in the, the beginning of, of our talk, and then we'll discuss the upcoming Marvel slates and kind of the, where the, the state of the entertainment industry is going. YouTube's going to get into the short video game, and then we've got a NASCAR driver getting in trouble for rage quitting during esports events. Then we'll jump over to tech news. We've got an update on the OneWeb story uh, where they've gone bankrupt recently. And then we can talk about the latest in data breaches and some of the privacy and authoritarian concerns with the way the internet is being used during the coronavirus crisis. Big stories this week, and we're going to get started. Calling back all nerds. Nerds! All right, and welcome back to episode 74 of, uh, of the Nerd Cantina show here. And still in uh, stay-at-home orders, we're still doing this coronavirus thing. Entertainment world is still shook up, uh, but there's there's some new things to talk about. Yeah, I got long-ass fucking hair. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> can't get a fucking haircut for nothing. It's starting to look like a hippie in this bitch. Just got to get the hand the clippers over. Yeah, and, that's uh, not going to happen. Give it a try. That is not going to happen. I got a I, I got a home done haircut here on my head. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> in, in insert joke here. I, I ain't got time to ramble off all the ones in my fucking head right now. <laughs> I, I, yeah, no, I'm I'm I, I would rather just go shaggy, put on a hat. No, thank you. <laughs> all right, well, let's move into uh, into week news and up at the top. You know, we'll, we'll talk. It's loosely an entertainment story, but it's Bob Iger the former CEO of uh of of Disney who's now just the the head of the the board of of Disney he is foregoing his salary as well as the other top executives over at Disney and it's just a an interesting you know sign this is where you start to see some billionaire altruism uh in the sense of uh, tax write offs for them I, but, I always hate to be the asshole in these situations, but like honestly, in my head, the first thing comes must I, be nice to be so rich I can I forego know. an I, entire year of my salary. I know, but the the opposite side of this is oh, you just laid off thousands of employees across Disney at theme parks and everything else, and you're still taking your salary. So like they don't really have a choice. Well, I mean, essentially, he's just up. essentially he just laid himself off. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, in the end, and what kind of asshole would he be just... if he hit unemployment up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me this government check right quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, He's... I do like I do, you know, I I. I do like the the it's thought process behind it, you know, it's like not effective towards charity, but it's a, it's a sign of kind of solidarity for the the employees that, yeah, are, that the, are losing the their solidarity wages part of it. I, I get and I do appreciate that, you know. And he's just going to write himself a bonus at the end of the year that's going to make him brain. Saying, like that's what I'm <laughs> saying. At the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. Nothing doesn't fucking matter. This dude ain't feeling it. <laughs> he's feeling the stock hits. That's what he's feeling. Yeah, right now. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. You know, but, but, but I, I mean, good for him to do at least something. I mean, there's plenty of assholes in there that are just going about life as normal. You know, for for him to at least make a gesture, you, you, can, you know, all right, buddy, I'll give it. Yeah, to, I think and that's really you. what what it comes down to is it's it is just a it's is a gesture. It shows his employees because again, you can't. How do you look at the employees uh, that you're cutting thousands of jobs? furloughing employees all over the place and then you can donate your year salary yourself. to the employees sure that too <laughs> you know that's that be step two is take <laughs> that take that four gold salary and put it into a fund to help that fucking pimply face 17 year old that throws up in a mickey mouse head from working 16 hours in the goddamn sun like cut but that hey, dude I, a small check the these billionaires are putting a lot of social pressure on each other to uh to to do good things during this uh this COVID-19 outbreak uh, as you get, you know, Bob Iger doing that. Google as a company donated Chromebooks to any students that need. Uh, so the California governor opened up like free internet access for a bunch of people, for a bunch of people who didn't have access to internet because they're homeschooling now and everything else. And then just said that internet access doesn't do any good without computers. And that's one of the, the, the problems. And then 
Google donated a ton of Chromebooks uh, to, to give to any students and parents that are homeschooling that didn't have home computers in order to do so. So another good thing to do. Yeah. Another write-off. <laughs> another, <laughs> another, you know, good publicity stunt to keep us not thinking about the nefarious shit we're going to talk about them doing later on in the episode. Um, <laughs> so, I, you know, I guess you could consider this one a wash for, for the, the shit we're going to talk about later. I've To me, though, I always wonder, like, why... Why we have paper books in schools at this point anyways. You know, like I remember in high school going to the to the to the book the book sale when when you'd have to pick up your books before school started and man, back in the the 90s, you were dropping like 5 600 on oh, on books. Like yeah. you could buy two laptops for that amount right now. Like, you know, but, so yeah, why are we the, still why are we still doing paper? It should you should we should save trees. Everything should be digital. Do the shit on a screen. You know, you like it, I don't I don't understand it, it why is, we're doing this shit as backwards. And, and the fact that you know, they're they're going to change one page in a 300 page book call it edition seven and make you rebuy the new version next year <laughs> that yeah. doesn't actually you can't actually use the new vi- the, or the old text or whatever else and yeah that that whole system is completely broken well and that's you know the digital our, ones don't save the school districts <laughs> any money well then our because, broke ass had to buy all the all the used books because <laughs> you know <laughs> dad had lots of kids and and that's lots of books to buy so yeah i was buying the used ones with the the cracks buying and and fucking you know I love Letitia right now, fucking making, over making it. Making your own <laughs> book protectors out of paper bags, yeah. so that way you can keep it somewhat pristine to turn in at the end of the year. You, you hit page three twenty five, and there's just a dick drawn in the corner that no one caught. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you left plenty of your your own dick drawings for the next kid. Yeah, but mine were artistic. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they increased the value of that fucking <laughs> shitty used book. <laughs> but and then you know you got we talked last week about Elon Musk giving away ventilators or, or not giving away ventilators, but at the time he was just said he was going to be making hundred thousand ventilators over the next couple months, and he was he was working towards that, and he started delivering them, and he's doing it free of charge using Model Three parts. Uh, Tesla Model 3 parts primarily as uh, to to make these ventilators, and uh, he's turning them over for free over to to the health industry. So another hey, more goodness. Yeah, Not giving you your cynic. Here comes the cynic guys. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I'm a musketeer. I'm, I'm gonna leave that one. I'm gonna leave that one alone. You know, right, not right, only about- did he did he do some work by by converting his factory and making ventilators now he's doing some charity with it and giving away for free man and it's a twofer <laughs> you know I, I gotta give it up to my guy elon it, it actually blows my mind though that the air you breathe in a tesla is probably cleaner than the air outside of the tesla that's you yeah. know, if they're able to make ventilators with car parts like it probably is. you might you know what i mean you're you're actually doing better off when you're in the car than when you're outside of it <laughs> and then uh last last uh billionaire that we're gonna talk about is uh bill gates and this one actually is interesting to me is bill gates he's funding the start of seven factories that that will have the capacity to make coronavirus vaccines when they come the interesting thing about it is that they're not seven just factories like geographically separated they are seven different factories equipped to make seven completely different types of vaccines that require different manufacturing uh, properties and everything else. And his his whole goal is that by the time a year from now or whenever they figure out what vaccine is viable out of the the 10 potentials or seven potentials, it'll get narrowed down to two. And then maybe two of those are really viable or maybe only one, but he'll have all seven factories up and running. So that way he can go into full production mode when it happens. And then six of them are just going to be scrap well he's been he's been really active in like fighting malaria in you know africa and and things like this so i i think he has a long-term goal with you know there's not just going to be factories sitting idle they'll get they'll get converted into doing something else i'm I'm sure he'll he'll find find a purpose for it but it but it won't serve it won't serve it won't yeah it won't serve the coronavirus throwing billions at at these factories that he knows won't won't solve this problem because he wants the factory that will solve the problem to be already made and not to go through contracting once we figured out which vaccine is good. I, so, I always, I always appreciate, you know, Gates, uh, philanthropy just cause like he literally hit a point where 
like people say money is no object. It's like a it's a saying to people, oh, money's no object. Like like money doesn't exist to him at this point. Like it doesn't like it doesn't there's there's not even a realm where yeah. he contemplates numbers. You know what I mean? Like it's just like yeah. what do I feel like doing? Okay, I'll do well, this. And I think for for you know, you could still judge the guy that he still has a hundred and I don't know. I don't know after the stock market crash, but before the stock market crash, it was like 102 billion dollar net worth. So, like, clearly he's not giving away that much. But <laughs> if he's still worth 110 billion or 102 billion or whatever it happens to be in the moment, but the the truth is, I think I think you can take away cynicism when you look at Bill Gates because I think he genuinely gives a shit about all these things. Yeah, he no, genuinely and thinks and he's, he's been to for be, a long time too. It's not like it's and it's he's picked he's up not this doing it for torch right off. Yeah. That's for sure. And he hasn't picked up this torch in the days of social justice and everything. He was doing this. Him and his wife have been doing this for for the last two decades. Yeah. Uh, have you know just kind of gave up on what we consider our reality and just try to do as much good in the world as they can. You know, he hit a point where he's like, I got enough to to feed my family for the next seven generations stashed over the side. What the fuck am I going to do with this other pile over here? You know what I mean? So like, yeah, when, when we talk about these these rich people numbers, like you can't imagine that kind of like power, that kind of like that access. You can't, you can't imagine it. There's, uh, no. You know, so, so to see him doing, you know, like the, the baller Jesus move out, you know, <laughs> like good for him, man. Good for him. All right. Well, let's, let's leave uh, the billionaires alone for now. And, uh, we'll, we'll uh, get in some, uh, some entertainment news here. I mean, I honestly don't really think about it. The, this all could just be a ploy because when society comes crumbling, who the fuck do you think we're coming for first? <laughs> like, I, don't 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 come to me. Like I gave you ventilators. <laughs> Everybody at Google, I gave you computers. Don't don't burn my house, please. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm carrying out a Van Gogh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm driving away with a Tesla. I don't give a shit about art. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's uh. Th- I think this is like a. A preemptive for the Armageddon coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now let's leave the billionaires behind and uh, and let's let's join into uh, some entertainment talk here first. With uh, really, you know, we've been talking about the various changes to movie slates lately, and you know, last week we talked about some of the video on just going straight to video on demand and how it would be absolutely damaging the theater industry, and the theater industry kind of fought back on that trolls. If I really, really give us some heavy handed words about Universal really screwing up and uh, and leaving the theater industry behind on their decision to go to trolls straight to uh, video on demand. And now you get like Forbes writing about how Black Widow, Mulan, these bigger movies, they can't do that. Uh, you know, at, at its best projection, Trolls was going to make $180, $200 million, uh, which sounds like a decent opening for an animated sequel, but that's not Black Widow numbers. Like Black Widow needs to do that opening day. Uh, Mulan needs to do that opening day. And you're not going to do that. The numbers just don't, aren't supported by video on demand that you're ever going to hit those numbers. Yeah, no. And, and they just released those those new dates um, with some, I guess, optimism. I think Mulan releases in July. Do you have it pulled up in front? I don't. Oh. Uh, so I think <laughs> Mulan releases in July now and Black Widow's going to release in November. So Black Widow's got some, some time too, but but Mulan and uh, that that rock Emily Blunt movie are the first kind of, like movies that they're predicting to come back, and I want to say that those are July and August release dates. So gives me some optimism. I'll be out of my goddamn house sometime soon. <laughs> Probably not. I got um, so used to seeing a movie every week, every Thursday, and it's been now like a month, month and a half since I've been in a theater. Like, man, I'm dying for some pretzel bites and some popcorn. <laughs> I'm fucking dying. Giant, so, giant cherry coke. Yeah, and but even in this, uh, you know, even though Universal gave those threatening, uh, kind of veiled threats about the theater industry never forgetting what Universal did, uh, Disney this week did send a movie straight to uh, to demand. And for the life of me, I can't remember which one it is. Uh, it, it was a, a minor movie or whatever else, but it was another theatrical release that Disney uh, pulled off. It was kind of a young adult teen type uh, movie. They they pulled it from their their 
their slate to go into the theater. That's going straight to on demand. And I think if this thing does push again to July or June, uh, we'll see if, you know, there's no telling when people are going to feel comfortable sitting in a room of hundreds of strangers shoulder to shoulder for three hours again. I don't know when the general public is going to feel comfortable doing that again. Well, so like me personally, I don't fear that. Even if I caught Corona, you know, I, I'm pretty positive I, I'd be all right. Like I'm, I'm not going to wall myself off that long. But, you know, we have a grandfather with breathing issues and it's it's that that I worry about. It's not myself. It's it's the the poisoning of my family that that worries me the most. And that's almost like worse than than worrying about myself, you know, because like if I get myself sick, I ah, fuck it. It is my own goddamn fault. But if I'm responsible for killing my grandfather, uh, yeah, I don't know how well I can handle that. <laughs> And, yeah. and, uh, grandpa, you know, is, is getting up there in age and he's got medical issues and I'd, I'd like to spend some time with him you know, before, while, while we still have those opportunities. And yeah, I'm, I'm in this kind of like conundrum right now of like, even though we've been tested in the house and we're okay, that was three days ago. In the last three days, I've gone on a few estimates. Who knows who I've come in contact with? I'll never find out if they've tested positive after. You just you live in this gray area. So until they actually have the test to see if you have either A, the antibodies, or B, you know, the five minute quick, you know, fifteen minute test that you can go take maybe once a week. Yeah, I don't know how fast people are gonna get back to this. Yeah, and that's I think really where until those those measures are in place, I, I I really just don't see people feeling comfortable. So I think this this year is going to be tough for the theater industry. And uh, and I don't know, maybe we get more Artemis Fowls. That's the movie that uh, that I couldn't think of for uh, for the <laughs> Disney. <laughs> maybe we get more Artemis Fowls that uh, that drops straight to video on demand uh, instead of having that theatrical release. Because now Universal did it, but so is Disney. So the theater industry, what are they going to? boycott disney no you're not like go go give that tough talk to disney and see how that mouse feels about it yeah and like there these companies are going to do what they can and these these mid-grade movies the the average rom-com these teen movies like artemis fowl and stuff like that they can go straight to video on demand and they can probably well, and do no okay one's, no one's really like going after netflix for buying up the movies that they think are going to be shit and not do good in the theater you know no one's really roasting netflix's balls over the fire about buying up the irishman or anything like that you know but the minute these these major I feel like it i feel like they are ro- <laughs> roasting their balls just <laughs> just netflix has got big enough where they can handle it now <laughs> you know i just like it's it's the it's the big ones that the theaters are are worried about you know and like i guess trolls is in that kind of gray area of of major movies like you said it wasn't going to do black widow numbers or anything like that but it is a family so now you're talking like four tickets plus big tub of popcorn and candy and and sodas for the entire family like that's those are where the theaters make their big profit margins on so the fact that the the families aren't going in there it may not have had a big ticket release but it would have generated a decent amount of profit in the theater for these the building yeah and i mean and if we want movies with the the quality of what what Marvel's putting together and the the level of production value and paying these big actors fifty million dollars for a movie and doing all that they need a theatrical release that they can make a billion on that they can make seven hundred fifty million on uh, in order well, to well that's to why I'm surprised it. I'm surprised some of the actors haven't spoken out about this you know because like yeah like you said if if things are going to start going on demand and profits and, and ticket sales are going to drop you know a lot of like so so scarlet joe's a lot of scarlet joe's salaries based on ticket sales you know if they were to release black widow into straight on demand what's going to happen to her point percentage that she makes on the back end you ain't getting shit so you know the, the Robert Downey Juniors who make hundreds of millions of dollars once Endgame. Yeah, he would really, made like seventy five million during Endgame. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Like those numbers are fucked. So I don't understand how a lot of these actors aren't coming out and saying, "No, nah, guys, you guys still gotta go to theater. Like, <laughs> like you still gotta go to the theater." Yeah, I think it's a it's a it's definitely a, a complicated kind of change uh, in order for the movie industry to go video on demand or straight to video on demand for in, in kind of like a pay per view model. Uh, you know, Netflix is different because they don't charge 
anything. They just it would release for free. That's just a part of being a member. Like here you go. Yeah, I just watched that new Mark so, Wahlberg one this week, and it's like, yep, no, yeah. nobody was going to go see this. <laughs> like, good call. But I'll watch it on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, but but I'll I'll spend spend I'm stuck in the Netflix. fucking house. I got nothing to watch. I watched it. It's that or Tiger King. Um, <laughs> But I oh, still haven't watched. Oh, you motherfucker! I was just about to ask. <laughs> no, nope. you, you haven't even haven't started it. it, man. Not even a single minute. God damn it! I, I, I barely made it through devs this week. I, I watched exactly one hour of movies this week. Um, F- fucking Carol Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> over my head. Um, but yeah, it, you know this. This is a, a difficult thing. We've got another story in here. You know, coming from uh, MovieWeb.com, where there's speculating whether AMC can ever recover from from this coronavirus stuff and whether the theater industries are going to recover from just being out like this. And if more movies go video on demand and everything else, the, they may never see strong you know years again uh like i said if there's no consumer yeah, if confidence an AMC, that they can be like safe amc is the biggest chain there is and if amc can't take jesus what's gonna ask movie theaters like and I'll, I'll be disappointed the reason why i'm able to write all these reviews is because the a-list program you know i ain't trying to pay no 15 dollars per movie i go see four or five movies a month you know and to to think that that might covid might take out my whole system like yeah is is pretty fucked up man and makes you wonder like how you know you just assume these these movies are making a billion dollars everybody's going to the theater popcorn costs 10 bucks a pop is like seven you know what i mean you just assume that these these theaters are just raking in money but but they're not and in order to in order to kind of justify i think most people are seeing it in there and what the article kind of hints at is that the what you see is all these theaters, uh, you know, wherever you live in the country, like the AMC theaters and stuff, they're all adding in those recliners. They're all getting fancier. They're adding food I think options. this was like a perfect storm of timing. Of money, yeah, there, this right? was like a perfect because storm of timing. Because they're trying to find relevance because people stopped going to the movie as much. So AMC at the end of 2019 reported that they were at a $5 billion deficit uh, at the end of 2019. And they had a net loss of $110 million in 2018. This year... Oh, oh it's dead. fucked. It's fucked. They're dead. And like I said, even even if they start running movies again in July, yeah, you're going to get the big movies. People might go and risk it, but nobody's going to go risk it for these rom-coms, for these little, to go sit next to some coughing idiot uh, sitting inches from you. So I think even if they come back in June, July, and they get essentially a seven-month year of theater goers, they're still dead. Yeah, it's 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 pretty scary. And and me as an avid movie goer, government wants to bail out these airplanes. I don't fucking ever go on a goddamn airplane. But I'm in a theater every fucking week. Like you need <laughs> you need to come up with some stimulus package for these movie theaters, help a brother out. Like fuck. But but truthfully, I mean that that will probably be the only thing that can save them is some some level of stimulus some level of, well, of something that's going to step in and so, that's, so yeah, that's what they, this article they, like speculates. like they worry about the airlines and stuff like that but really to me the people that are most affected by this are like the movie theaters the bars the restaurants you know like these were the people that were heavily reliant on you know are, are people going out and enjoying themselves and having a good time you know these industries are taking huge hits like your your favorite restaurant that you like to go to might not ever come back you know yeah. what i mean your your fit your dive bar that you used to go to after work might not ever open again just because a lot of these places they 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 get by on thin margins and and having to be shut down for two months, three months, maybe four months, you know, and even when it comes back, not making the the same amount of money they were making on a regular basis to begin with, it's going to be devastating. And and I don't think any of us want to see our favorite places close. You know, I, I know when, when they lift the order, some of the first things I'm going to do is go to the theater and go to my favorite restaurants and, and, t- yeah, and tip I, well and, and eat good because... You know, like I've actually eaten eaten out more. You know, I'm cheap. I don't I don't go out to eat very often ever. Uh, we've eaten out more in the last two weeks, uh, not because we we can't go for ourselves, but because we're trying to support local restaurants. So we're just doing takeout and 
doing curbside for, for these small local restaurants that we know have opened up in the last year and a half. We know that they've got to be dying. Uh, yeah, my, my favorite restaurant around here, around my house, is this uh, Sushi and Hibachi restaurant. And I, we were in the area, and I called him the other day and just asked, you know, like, hey, you guys doing pickup orders? He's like, yes, we are. <laughs> like, 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 please, there's, please come pick up some food. <laughs> there's, there's literally a restaurant we like out here that's doing, it was like for $40, you get four meals, they're going to wrap up a dessert and they, and they throw in a roll of toilet paper with it. Oh, and, snap. And genius. They're, they're Fucking here. genius. It's, it's, it's a great promotion. So there's all kinds of interesting local restaurants doing uh, follow your favorite local they restaurants. Must had a t- you they must have had a TP plug, man. Like, I don't understand how they, they're able to even pull that off. <laughs> I'm 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 in a lot of the, like the local Facebook groups so I could advertise my electrical company and that's all people are posting like I ran out of toilet paper two days ago <laughs> like I feel like I'm in this like perpetual Seinfeld episode like can you spare a square <laughs> can, can you like, I I can't possibly spare a square <laughs> yeah just uh it's dire this country's yeah. in but yeah I, I, I hope to God that that after you know the country's still kind of like behind in in getting it up and like none of the SBA programs that I'm trying to uh attach to for my business are up and running yet you know so we're still kind of lagging behind in the trying to recover from all this so I'm hoping there's going to be a second wave they do focus on some of these these other industries that hit really hard uh, just a package that goes to just restaurant owners bar owners concert hall owners like these are the places that that you know the limited times I do go out I like to frequent and if they're not there anymore, you, you might as well lock me back in my fucking house again. Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult. Um, but we can, let's move from, uh, from uh, I guess, the depressing closing of our favorite uh, favorite things here. And I guess talk about a great story uh, with, you know, our sports are shut down. And it's, it's causing some problems with uh, the sporting world. But NASCAR has embraced the coronavirus cancellations and they've actually created their own like esports division where they're having the drivers and i said this already like i don't know why like nfl is not doing this the, the, the quarterback and defensive captain of every team playing madden games against other teams and whatever people will watch it people will at least oh, yeah, they're, they're, engage. They're clan- yeah they just want to see drew and, Brees's face again or something you know like just like- so nascar is doing simulated races uh esports races and bubba wallace uh he had a terrible showing in the simulator race. He like crashed, <laughs> crashed on lap 11, uh, and then continued in the race, was in dead last. And at one point in time, just rage quits out of an actual live esports NASCAR event. And he has lost a legit sponsor due to his esports you, you rage gotta, quit. Like anybody that's ever video gamed and thrown a controller at the TV, you got to love this story. Like you got to <laughs> love this story like like they take this regular dude who drives really fast and it's like no don't worry it'll be the, it'll be the same it's simulated it's a video game it's <laughs> it's gonna be just the same just get grab the wheel come on guys we get we gotta do this and then he gets in there and you know just like every non-video game parent you know gets into the gets into this game and just by the mid middle of it gets so frustrated i i just i just love every bit of this story it is great yeah no it, it's it's phenomenal i i i respect bubba wallace more i actually respect the sponsor as well <laughs> for, you like punish that bitch you finish that game yeah. like, <laughs> Suck we've all it had up, that bub. we've all had that friend that's flipped over a board game i may have flipped over a few myself and that dude's an asshole and he deserves to be punished. I've, I've smashed a couple controllers on my head. <laughs> <laughs> a funny story that's kind of, of adjacent to this one is I'm a degenerate gambler. I like to bet on football. And so I get all the emails from the football betting sites and everything like that. These motherfuckers got the nerve to send me an email to ask me if I want to bet on a simulated Madden game. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of fucking asshole do you take me for, sir? Like, oh yeah, I, I wonder. I wonder if uh, players' lounge is popping from. Uh, <laughs> like, like, do you know? Do you know how bad of a degenerate gambler I would feel like if I'm just betting on simulated Madden games? Like, that's what. That's when you check yourself into into a program. <laughs> like that is literally. If if you are out there right now and you put 
you know, fifty dollars on, <laughs> on the Falcons playing got you know the Rams <laughs> on a simulated Madden game that was live streamed on Twitch. Go seek help. Like please <laughs> go seek help. <laughs> All right, well, uh I think I think that's it for for entertainment unless for, you feel like talking about YouTube shorts. But uh <laughs> Well, I do I do like so so real quick then yeah, I guess. Uh so YouTube is going to create an app to rival TikTok. And I mean, we've had our issues with TikTok in the past on the show, you know, so I want to say that um last number i heard what did i send it to you it was like tiktok has 800 million 80, yeah or yeah. 800, 80 or 800 there's kind of Good a big question. difference <laughs> it's a slight difference i want to say uh, it's 800 i want to say it's 800 million because I, I thought it was close to a billy i was like yeah, holy it, shit worldwide it probably is yeah so like tiktok has 800 million users it's a chinese owned company they're stealing all kinds of data and doing nefarious shit with this app we've we've stated in the past that you probably shouldn't use TikTok. Obviously, no one listens to our show. <laughs> so, all right. Eight, TikTok has 842 million first-time downloads in the last 12 months alone. Holy shit. <laughs> you know, so given the fact that, that it is a Chinese-owned company that does dirty shit, I do like the fact that a YouTube is going to come out with a rival. Yeah, it, which is owned by Google. And they already own everything. Like what? What at this point? What can Google learn? I would rather have evil. Am- I would know. rather have evil Americans own everything than evil Chinese people. <laughs> okay, like, so I'm a, I'm a hometown so yeah, I, guy. All right. <laughs> I've I've never I've never downloaded TikTok. I'm not a part of that 842 million that downloaded. I want it. I want uh, the super villain I know, not the super villain I don't. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, YouTube's trying to get into this this short game, compete with with TikTok. I don't know. I guess I think everybody's attention span, like the shorts, is where it's at. I I don't I don't know what Quibi is. Do you know what Quibi? The I have so you seen these commercials. I, with I'm, this Quibi like, stuff? I'm fighting it. I'm fighting it. I, so so what so Quibi? I, so what Quibi but does? Like legit actors and stuff that are putting together these eight minute videos on Quibi's in. Like I don't I don't know what, what it is. I, so what I think, okay, like send all your emails and comments. Like we're <laughs> taking a wild guess because I don't even want to click the website. I don't want to find out any information about it because I'm not <laughs> trying to support this whatsoever. But I'm pretty sure Quibi is like, oh, you don't have time to watch an hour long Game of Thrones episode. We're gonna condense it into five minutes and give it to you right here. Boom. No, I think it's originals. I think it's I think it's original no, content. I don't think so. That people are like doing their own original shorts, and they can't be greater than like I think it's like they charge like a hundred bucks a year for it, though. Yeah, because it's like there's legit like actors and stuff that are putting together. There's legit actors on TikTok, episodes. motherfucker. No, no, no. Th- those are that's like Instagram famous people. No, this is- man, <laughs> I'm telling you, like you could see Sofia Vergara and all these like like if you, if you're a somebody and you don't have a TikTok, then you're probably not a somebody. <laughs> I don't know. So somebody join the nerdcantina.com forward slash community. Jump in there. Tell us why we're missing out. What great contents on Quibi. But I'm the same way. I see the ads all over the place and I won't click an ad. I won't click it. I, I won't do it. I, I, don't, I don't need another subscription and I don't need something just stealing five minutes of my life 10 times a day <laughs> <laughs> because that's exactly what it turns into. So nope, not doing it. I, I can't, I can't handle it. Uh, I think that like Quibi's going down that like lack of willpower where people can just be like, oh, I got, I got five minutes, and then three hours later. That's why I thought it was like it was a, it's a app program that takes like the latest This Is Us episode and cuts out all the bullshit, and it's just like blah blah blah. This happened. This happened. This happened. This happened. You're caught up. <laughs> it's like the previously on that before. <laughs> yeah, it did. it's like it, I think <laughs> I think you're wrong. Somebody go. Somebody, somebody, somebody go to the canteen and tell Stevie's wrong. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe I right. maybe I just developed a new service. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. We're not TikTok users, but what we're saying when YouTube Shorts comes out, get the hell off TikTok and join YouTube Shorts because TikTok is is definitely doing like it is a Chinese espionage attempt at uh, at understanding U.S. consumers. So get away from it. Yeah. Tell, quit, tell quick, tell tell grandma to quit doing the Harlem Shake and fucking <laughs> move on over to an American based company. Thing? <laughs> yeah. All right, tech news. Let's roll through some tech news here because we because uh, we ain't got no space. Yeah, it was a, it was a, a very slow week well, in outer space. I mean, the only real news I didn't even put the article up there, but I did follow it. Uh, the third prototype of the Starship did did destroy this week. 
in cryogenic testing, <laughs> pressure pressure testing. Another, so we're down we're down to Mach four now as uh, as three starships have have failed, uh, which is a part of the process. I, I don't look down on. Yeah, we've said that before. A starship or, or SpaceX for that, but that was really the only space news that I was paying attention to this week. Coronavirus got even alien self isolated. <laughs> <laughs> but let's uh, let's move into well, we can do a quick uh, quick wrap up of we talked about OneWeb uh, last week. OneWeb being kind of the competitor to Starlink, and it was really the only other satellite internet company that was really actively launching satellites. Like two weeks ago, it launched satellites. One week ago, it filed for bankruptcy. <laughs> uh, and then we talked about it. We talked about like what would happen to OneWeb. And we were just speculating, saying, like, well, of course, one of the big four companies is going to buy it. Like, which one's not in the satellite internet game? Facebook or whatever else, they're going to buy it. And then, sure as shit, this week, you start to hear that OneWeb is now shutting down its staff, is shutting everything down, and they're in talks with Facebook and Amazon to sell the, the 74 satellites that are in orbit and the rest of what they've got planned. Yeah, we were leaning to more towards Amazon. somebody that wasn't already in the satellite game, like a Facebook. So I said Facebook. Yeah. So Facebook's had plans to do it, but they haven't actually moved on any of it. But Facebook does have a, a plan to uh, to get out into space based internet. They just haven't started it. Uh, Amazon's closer with uh, the their constellation network, but they also haven't gotten off the ground or or, or launched any satellites yet. So. This could be either the jumpstart into the Constellation Network, or it could be the start of Facebook really making a serious ploy. But but like you can predict, some company's going to go down. They've got some innovative technology. We know who's going to buy them. It's one of five options. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> there's just not too many not too many buyers in the satellite game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, and then another. Uh, so we can move on to new topics this week, and uh, we can talk about just some AI news artificial intelligence there was a new artificial intelligence tool uh, that was created uh, as we're going to see many of these i think kind of pop up uh, one of them this week it was helping to identify coronavirus patients that were really at the the greatest risk of having what they're calling wet lung or that really really low down deep uh, pneumonia that is causing the ventilator issues and, and everything else uh, and there's an ai tool that's able to predict it pretty accurately uh, by just looking at the what type of patient it is their history uh, and coming up with pretty good models that are if the medical industry starts listening to it, they can they can benefit significantly. And, and this is just another example of how, like I say, that you know AI and robots aren't just going to steal the blue collar factory jobs. You know these these machine learning systems are going to maybe not steal all the medical jobs, but they're going to devalue them. That's for sure. You know if you're if you're making high six figures as a doctor now, be prepared for a price cut. A salary cut in, in the near future because robots are going to take away a lot of what you do every day and streamline your job. And now you're not, you know, you're not as talented as you think you are. Yeah. And I mean, we could jump. Uh, I had this article on the list for, for later in the talk, but we could jump to it now uh, in the sense that like the Guardian.com posted uh, an article about how what we see is already is that bosses are looking to speed up automation uh, as as the virus is making human employment more risky this designation that you have to claim somebody as essential uh well not everything's essential but it's still beneficial and necessary for the growth of a company well now they're looking at how do how do you replace the human in those uh in those positions and uh, the these massive spikes uh of unemployment those humans going home a smart business person is looking at how you replace that human. How do you put systems in place using artificial intelligence? How do you put uh, robotic systems that are more reliable in in the sense that you can run it 24 hours a day and can cover these gaps? Well, yeah. And with the Fed dropping interest rates and the government giving out all kinds of money right now, it's a great time to take out a big loan and buy a bunch of robots and give it a whirl. You know, it's, yeah, there's industries changing. It's, it's, and you know, there's, there's a lot of talk about how people think it's, it's, you know, society will bounce right back. We've we've had re- industrial revolutions in the past, and it's just going to bounce right back. And I I don't think it's it's the same. I really don't. I think it's going to be one of these things where you know I don't think any time in history we've just totally made humans obsolete. I really do think though that this crisis is like worldwide is going to cause a lot of businesses to rethink how they do things. Uh, a lot of them, I think I think you're going to see a huge boom in remote work after this. Like twenty twenty one is going to be the year to get remote work. Yeah. And, 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 I think a lot of companies are going to realize that hey, we did just fine for six months 
Uh, we could reduce overhead. We can have less physical office space. We can hire people in lower cost of living areas that could work remotely. So it keep they don't need require as much salary. Like I think it's going to cause a lot of remote work. So I think 2021, we're going to see a huge boom in remote job offerings. And then I think a lot of companies are, are being smart and they're going to look at like, how do we just remove the humans? How well, do we and, remove and these virus Sam, catchers? Sam Harris recently just had a podcast with the, the guy who owns Tumblr and he owns... Man, some other big tech. He he owned WordPress. WordPress, yeah. So so he was, owns WordPress and he bought Tumblr. And they did a whole hour long discussion because he he lets all his employees work all over the yep. world. And he was going over some of the hurdles that he had to to get over in the the beginning stages. He breaks it down into like five iterations of where your company's at in remote working and things like that. And most of the world is in iteration one and two. He's in iteration five, you know, and he. He, he went over all the different plans to bring it there. And I hope something like this does push, push people, you know, more work from home situations. Cause from, from the studies that, that we've seen, it breeds better work environments, better, happier employees. Productivity doesn't slouch at all. People are able to, there's, there's so many benefits that come from working at home, but we're just kind of stuck in this factory mindset of nine to five, show up to the office, put in the grind. No one's willing to, to really think out of the box. And with a, you know, a a tech generation getting older and becoming into more power in a situation like this, this might be the thing that pushes it over a hump and we might really uh, reframe society after this point. Yeah. And I mean, I am just enjoying watching all of these crazy videos on the internet of, of people not realizing their cameras on, on zoom and they're on the toilet while they're in a business meeting <laughs> and, <laughs> and yeah, husbands walking scream, in their underwear. <laughs> yeah. People just scream capturing all kinds of uh, crazy nonsense that people are doing on these meetings. Cause we are clearly not professionally prepared to be working from home. No. Uh, so that's, that's been internet gold, uh, to see all the, the fails of work at home life. Um, I mean, my, my, my 18 month old daughter's doing zoom preschool calls. <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> even, even my, my one year old is, is got, you know, scheduled online meetings and shit right now. I mean, it was, it was a quick turn with where zoom, I mean, zoom ran the world. And then now we see this week, uh, you know, some of these, these other articles that we have to, to discuss today is zoom quickly. They weren't ready for taking this. over. And then they're they're not ready to handle all of this, and they're not ready. You know, once they once anything gains national notoriety like this, you get the assholes coming out of the woodwork looking for to how to how to exploit it, how to how to one find a vulnerabilities for their own personal benefit. You even got people just doing it just to be assholes, just, just be to, like Zoom bombing, uh, conference bombing is a thing. Just just joining random business conferences and stuff like that, and doing dumb shit has, has become something that people find entertaining. Uh, so Zoom is having huge issues with uh, with their privacy concerns and they're they're facing multiple uh, multiple complaints. It, it was it was announced that New York is no longer allowing their school systems at all to to use school, Zoom as a conferencing software between students or anything like that. Uh, as a man in Florida joined into some class and exposed himself to uh, to a Zoom classroom like why uh, bro and, and it's just, <laughs> like, like, I, I just don't get it like i i've said I've, I've said it probably like at least eight times in the last like three days i just i just want off this plane like i didn't i didn't ask to be here i just want i just want to get off like it's a bad roller coaster ride just get me off this thing like this is so it's so absurd yeah, and just today the the department of justice announced that they're looking into zoom and their privacy issues that they're they're now incredibly concerned with what they're seeing and uh and they're taking a look at it uh themselves so and i and i feel kind of bad for zoom in the sense that they were they were just trying to be the better skype and they weren't even at like skype levels and now like that's all people are talking about is zoom like i'm I'm sure skype ceos and the skype board is like do people just forget we fucking exist like (laughs) skype Skype yesterday uh skype yesterday came out and and changed their policy to where you can now do skype meetings and skype stuff without a login so that was that was the thing that zoom benefited from you could just send a link to anybody that was also their exploit that that people are zoom bombing and everything else uh skype just opened it up to where 
they said, oh, we, we can do the same thing Zoom's doing. We've now made it to where you don't have to have a login. You don't have to give your, us your email address. Anybody could use Skype uh, regardless. Hey, so guys. Skype's getting hey in the guys, game, too. Hey, guys, over here. <laughs> Remember <laughs> us? <laughs> what, what, in hindsight, being 2020, since we've used Zoom for the last year to record this show, how did we not buy stock? <laughs> how did how did we not buy stock, Zoom yeah. stock the day we the first day we talked about this virus possibly shutting down society? I I pu- punch myself in the scrotum <laughs> for every time I think about the stock I haven't bought. Like I never bought Amazon stock. Like I was using Amazon and selling books on Amazon. Like I was reselling books on Amazon when it was just a book service, and I saw the growth of Amazon. I benefited from it, and I never thought for a moment to be like. Yeah, I should toss some money there. I remember, <laughs> I remember watching Attack of the Show the day Bitcoin was in, was invented, and them talking about it, and me thinking to myself like, "It's fucking that makes sense. It's World of Warcraft gold. Like, who's going to give real money <laughs> for World of Warcraft gold at any time? These servers could just shut down, and there goes a thousand dollars of my money. You know, if I'd have gave them a hundred dollars the day I watched that episode." I want to say I quantified it, and right now, or at the peak, it would have been worth like 170 G's. My hundred, <laughs> my hundred dollar investment, 12, 15 years later, would have been worth 170 fucking grand. <laughs> like, and, and I literally, like, I vividly remember sitting in the living room watching the news part. You know, watch them talk about digital money, digital money. I'm like, what fucking moron is going to give real fucking government backed money to some jamoke with a server in his basement talking about I got bitcoins, yo. <laughs> Yeah, who's, and, who's the fucking moron now? This is the second week in a row that we're going to remind our audience here that if you're here looking for financial advice, <laughs> go somewhere else. Oh, yeah. But before you do, stop over at Patreon and give us a buck <laughs> <laughs> and, and support the show because we've 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 screwed up. Yeah. That's why we're here today. We, we fail. We fail hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, I, but, I do feel bad for them just because they. You know they weren't ready for this. They 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 had their own growth plans and they were doing they were doing good. And and all of a sudden the world flips upside down and li- like everybody is using Zoom for all yeah. kinds of shit now. And then ev- and then five days later, every news outlet is shitting on Zoom and telling everybody what a privacy nightmare it is. And uh, and I mean. Their stock went down again. If you want to buy it now, because it went up and it went down hard uh, yeah. following all the privacy issues. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it, they'll they'll figure it out. You know, like this this telecommuting is is not going to go anywhere anytime soon. So they'll 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 patch it. You know, and and if they they come out of it as Skype's rival, I guess they can look at it as a as a net positive. Yeah, I think so. But uh, I don't know. We can move away from. Uh, from from that topic, let's let's just. I guess we can talk about another privacy concern with a, a company, and it's uh, it's Marriott, uh, and this is just some something public service announcement. Marriott just lost your information. Uh, if, yeah. if you've ever stayed at a Marriott uh, or one of the many hotels owned by Marriott or whatever else, but 5.2 million people's guest information was was lost uh, in a data breach yeah. again by Marriott, who who's had a, a large significant data breach before yeah and here here they go again yeah you 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 went in there worried about bringing home bed bugs but you <laughs> you should have been caught you know doing a better job of concealing your goddamn debit card like this stuff just but, everybody gets data breached like we might as well just walk around with our our social security numbers on our t-shirts and shit at this point <laughs> like but in in marriott's defense they only lost 5.2 million people if you put that in context to their 2018 data breach that was 500 million, <laughs> they're, they're doing well. This is this is a it's a huge improvement. They they they, they had a 90 percent cut on, <laughs> on, fucking, on on their data breach numbers. Good job, Marriott. <laughs> fucking dick. The, it, it, don't check his math. I, so I don't know how you solve this problem. So like, do you pass legislation that says if you have X amount of customers or X amount of information, you have to have X amount of encryption, you know, and, and like, I don't trust the government to, to be up on tech enough to know where the bar should be set, let alone enforce it, you know, but, it, but something's got to be done to, to, cause, cause you come out, these data breaches are so common now that it's not even bad press for them at this point. 
no one, no, yeah, no it's, one it's, cares. It's a blip. Only nerds like us. Yeah, no one care cares. We, we like to we like to talk about privacy issues and stuff. But yeah, everybody. It's kind of mundane now. Everybody just expects. Honestly, I, I think at some point in time the government's got to step in and make like credit monitoring for consumers free, like or or something. Like if all of our data is out there, and at this point in time, just about everybody's data is in one of these many breaches, uh, and if so much of our identity is tied into our credit score and our ability to to actually do things, like unless you're a billionaire you kind of rely on having some kind of credit like yeah. you can't get an apartment without it yeah like, it, i like it pisses you can't me even off. get a job oh, I, nowadays if yeah. you got bad credit like, a, like I, can, I can go on a tirade about the whole concept that like you know the experian is advertising like you can get a credit boost or whatever else that you could pay for a premium membership with experian and they can give you a credit boost and it's like bitch if my credit score should have been 30 points higher like if there's something in my credit that you could boost it 30 points higher because of something in there that's that's optional if you add it or not. Why is that? Why is that allowable? Why does the government allow them to allow me to pay to boost? Yeah, my credit score is just some arbitrary fucking number that they make up as they and go along. That just holds tremendous weight in my entire fucking life. And I think I think it's what they they advertise that the credit boost is where like then they'll roll in like your your monthly rent payments and other things that aren't normally reported to the credit bureau. And it's like if I can pay you fifteen dollars a month for you to boost that that bullshit like. That needs to be something that that's automatic in there. It's either something you're not tracking, or it's something that I get for fucking free. Yeah, uh, no, but like, it, it's, I, it's basic extortion. It's yeah, it's, 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 it's basically extortion. You know, my, my credit score holds tremendous weight over yeah. me being able to buy a house, buy a car, get a line of credit for my business. You know, take my kids on a vacation. Like, there's there's all kinds. Of, like, yeah, and, and like we said, nowadays, if you know companies are running background checks and credit scores just for you to get a job. So if I have shitty credit because I don't have a job and I can't get the job because I have shitty credit, <laughs> like what kind of fucking society are we fucking building here right now? Oh, all right. Let's, let's yank it back. Let's yank, <laughs> yanking it back here. <laughs> bring, bring it on back yeah. to a nice, to a nice calm conversation about how from all the surveillance and shit going on during coronavirus that dictatorships and authoritarian regimes are going to arise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, this, so This is a political topic that is interesting following following this. And, and it is a, a, a concern in an article. So this is coming from like uh, the, the independent.co uh, specifically talking about like there, there are already countries in this world that are overstepping significantly because of the coronavirus and, and going into a way more authoritarian regime. Like you can look at what's well, going on in Hungary. I was going to say, just, just this week I messaged you and John about yeah. it. Like Hungary went full Star Wars, man. Like they, 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 went, they, they went full fucking Palpatine. Dude was like, society's crumbling. We, you, you need to give me full powers. Don't worry. I'll be, yeah. I'm only doing it for Corona. Just give me five all, minutes later. Give me all <laughs> the power that I can have in this government. You know, that that's how, what, what's the line uh, Padme says? That's how liberty dies with thunderous applause. Like, yeah. That's exactly, and, and, that, like, and that's exactly what he did because that same day, uh, or maybe it was the next day, uh, he he started revoking like transgender. Yeah, like, he, he re- yeah, he revoked transgender classifications and designations like, and stuff. Because that's fuck? how you defeat coronavirus, everybody. Yeah, I know. Um, is but we also see like even like we we tout the the successful approach that like South Korea had in the fact that they didn't blow, like they were one of the early countries hit and they didn't blow up. Uh, but now you can you can look up uh there's all kinds of documentaries and stuff that talk about how south korea did it and the way they did it was like they f- the government fully tracked uh use facial recognition on all cctv they use cell phone data and the credit card data so that way if somebody showed up at a hospital that tested positive for coronavirus they went through that person's cell phone data credit card data and cctv found out every store that that person went to everywhere that they went person went to and then linked other people's cell phones and went knocking on people's doors and tested them as well anybody that person had contact with so they went with a completely authoritarian approach of surveilling everybody well and there's stories and coming out right now that google's trying to do the same thing with all of us they yeah and they they are in the sense that they're providing data on which communities are well we have better, we have more yeah we have more data. gaps in our metadata than a yeah. country like korea or china they're, they're or providing like anonymous that. data yeah but in south korea singapore hong kong they weren't providing anonymous data they were 
they were saying like, no, this person like with Bob, COVID, Bob went he was to within like, yeah. five feet of these hundred people. Here are their addresses. Go send somebody with a test kit to go knock on their door. Tell them they have to self-isolate for the next three weeks and test them. And that's what they were doing. So they didn't do it. South Korea beat the coronavirus without a single like shutdown like what we're doing in this country. But that's because they targeted anybody who came in contact through surveillance data and they forced those people into quarantine. And, and this is where it gets really murky waters because like there's going to be a large portion of people that say, well, no, that's a good thing, you know, but but as I've stated before, how if you want true freedom, you got to let bad people get away with things. If you want true freedom, some motherfuckers going to have to die of Corona. Like, I'm sorry. Like you can't, you know, we're in a very murky place right now where, you know, at first it was fear of terrorism. We gave up a bunch of our rights. Now it's fear of a virus and people are just like, I, I feel like a lot of this is just a giant compliance test by the world's governments. And, and this is this is the concern from from the the individual who wrote the article uh, in in this opinion piece is that's the concern is that dictatorships may arise from this because you, you give the government you give governments across the world these powers to surveil their people to to get this perfect data on where everybody's going where what they're doing and you're now controlling other people's behavior based yeah, on I mean, where they've been one of the, and does this can you turn that off like one of the most intrusive now, can you pieces just of legislation in American history came out of 911 in the Patriot Act you know yeah. because you know so so everyone should fear what's the next bill going to be written now in the in the wake of the coronavirus that is going to be written in in lieu for our our you know public health and public safety and things like that and really it's it's going to be huge governmental oversight i'm i'm very curious is to see what's going to happen to our court system in 2021 you're going to have all kinds of people that got tickets that got arrested for not self-isolating for not quarantining themselves you're going to have businesses suing the government because yeah. look i went out of business because you forced me to close there there were 52 citations given today to people for violating the stay-at-home order in san diego and i'm telling you so. right now i'd wipe my ass with that thing <laughs> i would wipe my ass with that thing and throw it back at that barney fife motherfucker like like i i understand that we have health concerns and we're all trying to do our best but at the same time i live in a free fucking country and at one point you know we we let people be free to be assholes all the time yeah but, all the time so I, I'm I'm a supporter of the stay at home orders. I, I was a, an early adopter of it that I believe this should have happened before. See, that's, before it actually I don't happened. like that term, stay at home orders. It's really a stay at home suggestion, motherfucker. It's not you ain't ordering citations. me shit. You ain't ordering me shit. I'm a free and fucking man. You ain't telling me shit. It, I I find these things to be beneficial. It, this is just what when, what we're bringing up and what my concern is is. We just got to, as a community, keep our eyes wide open towards when, like, that there's no lasting legislation that comes from this and that we recognize where the overreaches are and when this needs to stop. Uh, and that's the that's the concern. Less so here, but like, look around the world at some of these countries around the world that were already like on the borderline of authoritarianism. And like they're full on authoritarian. Now. Well, and so, 12 so months from now they still will it's be. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna sound like a dick right now, but I don't care. So we're shutting down the entire world economy for the safety of two percent of the world. <laughs> for this, like literally. So think about that, like logistically, like yeah, like we are completely shutting down all of society to save two percent of of people that catch this virus it's, it's more than that but i mean realistically that's what the the number the death rate is at, at about now it's about two percent yeah it, if this thing got to scale the the death rate would go higher because you would run out of so at what point at, at what point this. does public safety not become all of society's problem but the two percent's problem so like uh, you know, you can't, it, it's, it's, it's so fucked up because like <laughs> we, we yelled at the spring breakers for being morons, you know, because like, yeah, to ask someone to stay in the house for two weeks is one thing to ask me to shut my life down for two months. Now that's a bigger fucking issue. And we kind of have to weigh the, the long-term effects, the, the overreach effects and just say, well, if you feel you might die from Corona, Corona, 
you stay in the fucking house. I'm going to the goddamn restaurant. If you think you are one of the people that might die from this, then you fucking lock your ass up. I'm gone, motherfucker. It's about to be summertime in Chicago. I'm not sitting in the fucking house. I'm not doing it. There, yeah. We, we've me and you have talked about this. We, we don't have to go too far down the uh, the the Corona rabbit hole here, but there does come a point that society has to accept risk because a vaccine's not coming anytime soon. Twelve months is a long fucking time, and we're not going to have one in twelve months. Maybe eighteen months. Maybe twenty months. You know, and I, and uh, I do understand the numbers. The numbers are so low right now because we have self isolated, and and the majority of the world is is really caring and doing a good job of this. But at some point, like I said, I need to get back to fucking my life, and the world will never be the same from from this shit. The kind of you know we're going to hit a recession, all kinds of fucking major fallout. The the virus. Well, in the long term ramifications of this whole thing, the virus and the deaths will probably be the least like most impactful thing that comes out of this. Well, and this is, ah, (laughs) 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 you know, Trump got in trouble for saying that the the cure can't be worse than the disease. Right. And he got fucking roasted by by media and and certain people. And I'll I'll give it to him when he's right. He's right. If you if you. If you, you just take it away from the person saying it, isn't, and you that, talk isn't about it in the what? isn't that in the Morbius trailer for Jared Leto? I swear <laughs> I to God, know. I swear to God, it's in the Morbius trailer. <laughs> but you know, if you, if you take away like the yeah, the the disease could be really bad, but so could a worldwide depression that leads to mass suicide and <laughs> genocide and genocide events and uh, and not mass suicide but war like war follows depression like not necessarily in this country but across the world and if and, there's, and if there's wars across the world then die. we send our troops too like that's yeah. how and then you see hundreds goes. of thousands of people die uh and, and it's a, gonna be yeah, it's all gonna economics. be corona adjacent it might not be <laughs> it might not be from corona but it'll be corona adjacent so all right I'm, I'm going to contemplate just editing this whole last like 10 minutes out here. You let that uh, shit ride, motherfucker. You let that shit ride. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get it. Let's get out of here uh, before we get too fired up. It's it's late. Um, all right, nerds. Well, uh, hopefully Man, the future's bleak. The, fu- <laughs> the future's bleak. <laughs> hopefully you're still sticking around. We're going to come back next week for more talk on Marvel and the happy fun things. We'll, we'll stay away from depressing topics next week. Yeah. Um, Support your local comic though. book store, <laughs> order some comics in the mail, <laughs> but, but Hey, thanks for, for sticking around and, uh, and joining us for episode 74. Uh, this week we're also releasing some, uh, some interviews from our book reviewer, uh, Megan, we also recorded that. So episode 75 will follow shortly, uh, with, with three good book reviews. So if you're stuck at home and you're, you're interested in picking up a book, Take a listen on uh, on to episode seventy five. Get some some good recommendations coming from Megan. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm depressed now. <laughs> All right, well, I'll take I'll take it out from here. Thanks again for listening. Like, subscribe, join us the Nerd Cantina forward slash community. Pound the share. Uh, have a good one. We'll talk to you again next week. Nerds. See you, nerds.